Well, Novak Djokovic has done it again. Did you ever doubt him? Down two sets to love, comes back for an epic five-set win with one of the best backhands I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely crazy. Uh, Yannick Sinner, though, lost from two sets to love up. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the stats on to kind of show how the forms flipped and how Novak was able to get back in this match and really take over from there. So was it a Novak brilliant dominant performance or was it a Yannick Sinner choke? Which one was it more of? Let's get into it here on The Slice, presented by Points Back Canada. Hey. Well, how you doing, people? That was a epic match. I actually, in one of my preview interviews, I predicted it going five sets. I thought Center had a chance. I didn't give him anywhere near as much chance as I give Fritz to play Nadal, which will happen later today. But the games that they both have, I thought... Sinner could do the bang, bang tennis, big hitting from the baseline and get through Djokovic on these courts. And for two of the sets, he absolutely did. Um, and then I also thought Nova, Novak could run away with it quickly and just overpower him, but he took two sets to do that. And then he did do that in the last three sets. So just a pretty crazy performance from both guys. I was surprised by both guys in different times in the match. It was very up, very down, very around. And yeah, as Novak said after the match, what changed for him? The toilet break after the two sets, we've seen lots of guys do this um, and, you know, they get to go to the toilet, come back feeling refreshed. And Novak, yeah, specifically said that he had that mirror to mirror chat and just told himself whatever he needed to say to get back in it. And he was definitely the better player from the third set on. And there's some pretty crazy stats to show that, actually. So welcome to The Slice. Thanks for being here. Make sure you subscribe. And The Slice is presented by Points Bet Canada. If you didn't know that, you know now. And they are betting our sports book partner. So if you're betting on the tennis from Ontario, jump on the points bet Canada train. Thank you guys for the support. So Sinner and Novak, Sinner and Djokovic, I think at the beginning of this match, both had surprising level. I mean, for the first five games, Novak went up 4-1, uh, just a single break. And you were kind of like, okay, Sinner's nervous. Novak's playing well. And then all of a sudden, Sinner, it seemed like Novak's level dropped and that and Sinner started to really just be effective and kind of lock down and not be as nervous. And then Djokovic's level seemed to be lower than I'm definitely expected coming into this match. And through the first two sets, he looked to me slow to move laterally and just making more mistakes than we th normally would. Sometimes you'll see his drop shot can either be, it's weird for me with Novak, his drop shot can be world-class as good as it comes basically, or it can be like atrocious and he can just miss drop shots in, halfway up the net or just put him to the service line and get him easily ran on to. Um, so I was surprised by Novak's level after the, in the first set, after he let Sinner come back into it. And then he was kind of just emotionally not there in the second set. And I thought he looked a little slow. And from Yannick, I was super impressed by the way that he came back in that first set, playing great, com coming through with his first serve when he needed it. Um, he's got a good serve, but it's not always as reliable uh, as other guys with big serves or other guys who are like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, um, but he was able to come up clutch in a lot of ways and finish out that first set and then kind of take the second set fairly easily routinely. Uh, you couldn't help from all the other times we've seen this with whether it's um, Musetti at the French Open, uh, Sitsabas at the French Open final, even I'm thinking about Medvedev against Nadal in uh, the Australian Open final. You keep thinking, I'm not buying this from Novak. I tweeted out even during it. I was like, are we buying this from Novak? Is he toast or is Sinner going to tighten up a bit. And that's the big question. What happened? What's it more of who's more to blame? Is it more to blame Djokovic's brilliance or, or Sinner's kind of inexperience and nerves? Well, it's never just one thing. It's never both or it's never, yeah, it's never one or the other. It's usually a bit of both. And in, in this, I'll show you stats here in a second. It was definitely a bit of both. Novak came out of that second after the second set break in an unbelievable form. Obviously he had to, win the last three sets. And he really made that clear that he was going to do that after he came back in the second or in the third set, he came out and served first serve percentage, 80% in that third set, really not letting, you know, giving Sinner a chance to break him at all. And that's the key, obviously. And then Sinner right away, starting in the third set, fourth set started to make more errors and play less consistently from the baseline and just, and serve less good, which we'll see here in a second than he did to start. And that makes total sense. The reason why two players don't normally play at the same, at their best level throughout the match is because 
when Djokovic is playing at his best level, serving 80% for serves and the pressure that puts on an opponent makes them play less good, makes them make more mistakes. And that's pretty clear. And, and it's obvious when it's happening, but you, sometimes usually there's a bit of a back and forth in a match. And in this match, it seemed to be Djokovic played bad at the beginning and Sinner was playing great. And then it just switched for the final three sets. And if it's a choke, it's usually like people slap the choke word on a lot of things. And I'm not doing it on this match actually, because I don't think a choke is when you have a clear opportunity to win the match and you let that slip kind of in a ridiculous way. Sinner, you got to win three sets in a match in the, in the slams to win. And he, as I heard Gil Gross say, was never close to winning the third set or his third set. So that is makes it not a choke to me. It makes it a lot to do with brilliance from Novak. The fact that Novak doesn't get, it's not super physical for him. So he was able to be physically there um, through the last three you know, and believe that he could get three more great sets out of him. And the way he came back into the set, into the match uh, in that third set was amazing. So let's take a look at the stats here. The, the serve percentage, the serve percentages is a big thing. So here's set three, for example. As I said, Novak came back in with an 80% first serve in 20 for 25. That's really awesome. And he won 85% of those points, only lo losing three points on the first serve. And while Sinner's percentage stayed pretty good in that set, um, he had a couple bad games. That's where he got broken, obviously. Um, and that was just a one break set there at six, three. Um, so that was, that was a clear increase in form from Novak there right off the bat to be like, I'm in this match. I'm not going down at three. I'm still here. And as that happens, right. You gotta, you gotta remember as that happens, once Novak gets even the, before he even wins the, the, the third set, it already feels like he's totally back in this match. Once he gets that break against center and he starts to move forward, playing a lot better. And you can see he's playing a lot better with the fact that he was getting a lot more first serves in and just finishing points much quicker. And his forehand got a lot better. He stopped to make, stopped making mistakes on that. And he started to hurt center a lot more in those forehand to forehand exchanges or when center was going back into backhand, Djokovic started to slice more and then take it up the line or go forehand up the line. He was just able to change it. it seemed like in the first two sets, center changing the direction of the ball was hurting Djokovic. And then it switched and Djokovic was able to hurt center with his court control and those types of things. But super impressive to see from Novak come out with 80% serving in that third set. So then we go to the fourth set and the stats get even crazier. So he got a lot less first serve percentage first serves in, but he only lost one point on the first serve, 17 for 18. And then in the fifth set, he won 12 out of 12. So, and in those two sets, Sinner served 44% first serve in. And then in the fifth set, 50% first serve in. So my disappointment in this match is not that Sinner was another young guy who lost from uh, two sets love up against one of the all-time greats. My disappointment, I guess, is that it wasn't really a great battle at all in those five sets. As I said before, Sinner was really never in a position to win any of the final three sets. And the fourth and fifth set is where it seems like he totally went away. Serving less than 50% in for serves in, you just can't beat Nadal or Djokovic doing that. They're too good of returners. The, there's going to be so much pressure on you all set, and it's just not going to work. I think he started the fourth set serving two double faults. It's just that's mental, that's emotions, that's the, the nerves of playing and trying to get across the finish line uh, in the big match that he's not used to, and Djokovic is totally used to. So the disappointment for me is where it became not a battle. It became Djokovic is running away with this things. This And if you took away the first two sets, it was like a three-set route, right? And that's just disappointing to see when you saw the level that Sinner could bring at the beginning of the match and how it affected Novak. And then once Novak was able to bring his game up, Sinner was not able to match it at all. And that's possibly to be expected for sure. But there's definitely things Sinner did at the beginning and can do to knock Djokovic off his top level of his game, like serve a better percentage in those last two sets, make less mistakes, Um and he just wasn't able to do that. So that's the inexperience. That's the level. That's the learning that Sinner's going to have to bring into it is when Djokovic comes back and we knew he would, how am I going to slow this down and stop the rot basically? So no, Sinner did not choke. Yes, Djokovic was brilliant. The way that he was able to just tighten it up, make less errors. It's not like he made no errors. 
Uh, I think he made like 20 unforced errors in the last three sets combined, but he hit a lot more winners and Sinner started to play worse as well. But let's talk about it. The backhand that Djokovic hit, absolute, the, the passing shot, I think where you knew the match was over, Sinner had a good first serve wide and then Djokovic returned it and Sinner, a short return, and then Sinner came onto it and hit it pretty good into the open court. And I remember watching that. There's no way Djokovic gets to this. And then he does. And he hits the back, hard back cross court, ends up on his stomach and does gives us the wings. That was just a vintage Djokovic moment. And that was unbelievable. And you kind of knew Djokovic isn't losing this now at this point. Um, so that was big time from Djokovic. I wonder if any of you on points bet Canada bet live game uh, on center on Djokovic when he was down, the odds would have helped out with Djokovic a lot, been the best for him, probably all tournament. Let me know if you did, but let me know what you guys think about that match. It was a great match. Props to center for playing as well as he did disappointing that it kind of he wasn't able to compete very well in the fourth and fifth set serving less than 50 percent first serves in but absolutely dominant by Djokovic it's why he's won the six times three times in a row and now he plays Nori next in the semifinal he's going to be a big favorite there but Nori's a tricky cat and he's got lots of things he can do as well so stay tuned for more updates from here on the slice this was kind of like a live unedited reaction version of this uh for this great match I had a lot of thoughts about it and you can follow them on Twitter where I was right in the action. So thanks guys for being here. Don't forget to subscribe or like this video if you did. And we will see you next time here on the channel.